What is SpaceX up to now? The company has just made a notable move at Massey, signaling the start of a new and highly anticipated test. Another major industry development is the confirmation of the launch date for NASA's SLS Artemis II mission. In orbit, SpaceX has also executed a large-scale altitude adjustment across the Starlink constellation. At the same time, SpaceX has opened 2026 with a successful mission, setting the stage for even larger achievements ahead. Let's explore all of this in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Psst, be sure to stick around at the end. You get a special message directly from me. All right, let's start the episode. In the final road closure update of 2025, expectations were not met as neither B-19 nor S-39 moved according to the anticipated schedule. Instead, seeing major flight hardware roll out, attention shifted to a far more unusual piece of hardware, a previously unseen ring section. This section consists of two distinct components, the ship skirt and the can crusher interface. This configuration had never appeared in testing or production flow before, which immediately raised questions about its role and purpose within the Starship program. The answer became clearer through SpaceX's next move. At noon on the 2nd of January, using a crane system, SpaceX unexpectedly lifted this ring section and carefully placed it on top of test tank B18.3 at the Massey test site. Test tank B18.3 is the same structure currently being used for hot staging validation, and notably the ring section was positioned directly on top of the hot staging assembly itself. Later that afternoon, the large crane was removed, clearing space for smaller cranes to move in and begin work on the newly installed connection points. At first glance, this decision appeared counterintuitive. The hot staging structure is already the highest structural component of the Super Heavy Booster. Under normal circumstances, Nothing is installed above it until the ship is stacked for a flight attempt. That raised an obvious question, why place anything on top of it now? The key lies in the identity of the ring section itself. This hardware represents the aft section of the ship, including the skirt and interface that physically connects the ship to the booster. By placing this section on top of B18.3, SpaceX is almost certainly validating the mechanical, structural, and load-bearing interface between the two stages. This suggests that the connection between the booster and ship in V3 of Starship may differ substantially from earlier versions. The booster already incorporates a completely redesigned hot staging system, and the ship is also expected to feature modifications within its engine bay to properly integrate with this new architecture. The interface between the two stages is therefore a critical area where even small design changes can have major consequences. These changes will directly affect flight performance, structural margins, and operational reliability. Waiting until a full flight stack is assembled to evaluate this interface would introduce unnecessary risk and delay. By testing these components at the Massey site, SpaceX can identify issues early, validate assumptions, and refine the design before committing to full vehicle integration. Some observers believe that this test goes beyond simple fit verification. Stacking these two components may also represent an early stage stress test. The ring section effectively simulates the presence of the ship, allowing engineers to apply downward force and evaluate how the hot staging structure responds under load. It's possible that additional mass will be added during, test during testing to replicate the forces experienced during a fully stacked configuration. This would place significant stress on the hot staging assembly and provide valuable data on its structural behavior under extreme conditions. Understanding why this matters requires revisiting the hot staging design itself. SpaceX redesigned this system with inspiration drawn from the Soviet N-1 rocket, which employed a relatively simple and direct hot staging approach. The advantages of this design philosophy include improved heat and pressure dissipation, reduced structural mass due to the elimination of jettisoned components, and lower overall system complexity. Reducing complexity brings additional benefits. It simplifies manufacturing, accelerates production timelines, improves operational efficiency, and reduces refurbishment time between flights. All of these factors are essential for SpaceX's long-term goal of high-cadence, fully reusable launch operations. However, simplicity also introduces new concerns. The hot staging structure is now the direct load-bearing interface between the booster and the ship. When fully stacked, the ship alone weighs over 100 tons when empty. Once fully fueled, the mass supported by this interface can approach 1,300 tons. That load must safely be carried through every phase of ground operations, launch, ascent, and stage separation. Ensuring that the structure can handle these forces repeatedly without fatigue or failure is absolutely critical. This makes stress testing
testing at this stage not only logical, but necessary. The data gathered from these tests will directly influence the design and construction of future boosters, including B-19 and those that follow. This testing campaign may serve another purpose as well. Previously structural, previous structural stress tests, particularly those involving B-18, encountered issues that required redesigns and reinforced components. Lessons learned from those events can now be applied proactively, helping to ensure that future stress tests proceed more smoothly and yield cleaner results. At present, it's not clear when the full stress testing sequence will take place. Such testing will require a properly configured test rig and carefully controlled conditions. Meanwhile, January is already underway and pressure is building on SpaceX to maintain momentum. The primary focus remains preparations for Flight 12. Both the booster and ship assigned to this mission are structurally complete. S-39 was recently revealed in a striking moment behind dense scaffolding inside Mega Bay 2, offering a glimpse of the vehicle's progress. Even so, both vehicles will likely remain on hold until testing at Massey is completed. Given the current pace, a February launch window now appears more realistic than January. Predictions about the exact launch date remain open, and viewers are encouraged to share their thoughts. Turning now to another major topic, let's discuss the Artemis 2 launch timeline. Late last year, NASA officially confirmed that the earliest target date for Artemis 2 is February 6th. This confirmation was delivered through a brief agency statement by Bethany Stevens, a spokesperson for NASA's communications team. Importantly, she emphasized that the date remains subject to change depending on the final assessments of flight readiness. These assessments include evaluations of the spacecraft, launch infrastructure, flight crew, and operational teams. To account for potential issues, NASA has established a launch window extending into April. Comparisons between Artemis 2 and SpaceX Flight 12 are inevitable. Which mission will launch first remains an open question and one that continues to fuel discussion. From NASA's perspective, confidence in a February launch appears strong. Prior to confirming the date, Bethany Stevens stated that Artemis 2 continues to make steady progress. She also revealed that vehicle rollout could occur in less than two weeks. That statement places rollout firmly within the first half of January, making this month a critical testing period. Once the vehicle reaches the launch pad, NASA will begin final integrated testing of the entire system. This includes propellant loading tests for both the core stage and upper stage, which rely on liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. These tests are a essential for validating fueling procedures, thermal behavior, and ground support equipment performance. Following propellant testing, a static fire test is widely expected to occur around the third or fourth week of January. This test will verify engine performance and, performance and confirm that the vehicle can safely proceed toward launch readiness. NASA has made it clear that these tests are designed to gather actionable data. If any concerns arise, the vehicle can be rolled back to the VAB for additional work. This flexibility is a key part of NASA's risk management approach. Overall, NASA has begun 2026 with cautious optimism. January will be an intense and demanding month as preparations continue for the second Artemis mission. This flight is particularly significant as it will be the first crewed lunar mission in more than 50 years. The stakes could not be higher. The Artemis program has consumed tens of billions of dollars and key components such as the SLS, Orion spacecraft, and mobile launcher have faced persistent criticism for slow development, escalating costs, and quality concerns. As a result, the early months of 2026 represent a defining moment. Next, let's shift focus to SpaceX's decision to lower the altitude of its Starlink constellation. Starlink satellites currently operate at an altitude approximately 550 kilometers above Earth. SpaceX has now begun lowering the orbits of around 4,400 satellites, or nearly half of the entire constellation to roughly 480 kilometers. This reconfiguration is expected to continue throughout 2026. The reasoning behind this move was explained by Michael Nichols, SpaceX's VP of Starlink Engineering. He stated that Starlink is undergoing a significant orbital adjustment with the explicit goal of increasing space safety. Lowering satellite altitude condenses orbital spacing and delivers multiple safety benefits. As the solar cycle approaches its minimum, atmospheric density decreases 
forces, which causes objects in orbit to decay more slowly. At higher altitudes, this can extend orbital lifetimes by several years. By lowering the satellites, SpaceX can reduce ballistic decay time by more than 80%. In practical terms, this means that a satellite which might otherwise remain in orbit for four years could deorbit within a matter of months. This significantly reduces long-term debris risk. In addition, the population of debris objects and other satellite constellations is considerably lower below 500 kilometers. Operating in this regime reduces the aggregate likelihood of collisions and simplifies conjunction management. Nichols also highlighted Starlink's reliability record. Out of more than 9,000 operational satellites, only two have failed on orbit. Even so, SpaceX aims to minimize risk in worst-case scenarios. If a satellite does fail, a lower operational altitude ensures that it will re-enter Earth's atmosphere quickly. This is especially important given risks beyond SpaceX's direct control, such as uncoordinated maneuvers by other satellite operators. With Starlink now accounting for roughly two-thirds of all active satellites in orbit, safety and debris mitigation have become essential to maintaining a sustainable low-Earth orbit environment. While the full impact of these measures will take time to evaluate, they reflect a serious effort by SpaceX to address growing orbital congestion. Now to SpaceX's first launch of 2026. Following a record-setting 2025 with 165 Falcon 9 launches, and five Starship flights, SpaceX carried a strong momentum into the new year. At 9.09 p.m. Eastern on January 2nd, a Falcon 9 lifted off from SLC-4E in California, carrying a Cosmos SkyMed second-generation satellite for the Italian Space Agency and the Italian Ministry of Defense. The mission achieved two clean milestones. B-1081 landed on the drone ship OCISLY after about eight and a half minutes, marking its 21st success successful recovery. Less than 13 minutes after liftoff, the satellite was successfully deployed into its intended orbit. While the flight did not set new records, its importance was symbolic and operational. It was the first orbital launch of 2026 worldwide, executed without issue after a brief delay caused by a ground system problem. SpaceX resolved the issue quickly and opened the year with a flawless mission. With Falcon 9 launches continuing at high cadence and Starship testing accelerating, attention now turns to what SpaceX will accomplish next. If this launch is any indication, 2026 is already positioning itself as another pivotal year. And with that, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up. By the way, I've been getting a lot of comments lately that, hey, I sound like AI, but uh, to basically echo what I've said in the past, maybe like, what, two years, three years ago, I'm not a robot, okay? And to prove that, here's the bloopers. Signaling the start. <laughs> Nothing is installed above it. All right, buddy. Integrate with this new architecture. The ar It may also inform changes to manufacturing tolerance.